Hey y'all, in this video, I'm sharing four apps or services that you can use for your nonprofit and they're all free. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, I'm Tiffany with Boss on the Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So if you need help with your nonprofit, you should be subscribed to my channel because I drop videos every week and I talk about startup and fundraising all related to new and small nonprofits. So I wanted to do a video on technology, apps, services, whatever you want to call it that you can use for free to really help you out in your nonprofit. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to give you four examples. So make sure you watch to the very end. I also did another video on free tech you should be using for your nonprofit. I'm linking that above. So make sure you also check out that video. These four apps that I'm talking about help make your life easier when you're starting your nonprofit. The thing about being small and being new, you know, being in that startup phase, you have a lot to do. And a lot of times you don't often have a lot of help. Or even if you do have help, you need something to bring you guys all together to make sure y'all are working on the same things together and you can collaborate. And so these apps I chose for this video in particular because they help organize you and they help manage the work that you're doing when you're starting your nonprofit. Number one is Slack. So Slack is a messaging system. So I'm dating myself with this, but just stick with me, okay? So back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a service called AIM. So it was AOL Instant Messenger. And what you would do is you would message your friends over the internet, right? You could put like different away messages and you can chat each other. It was groundbreaking at the time. I know now hearing me describe it, people who are like younger than me are like, so. <laughs> but the reason why I describe that is because that's kind of what I think about when I think about Slack. It's a messaging tool that you can use to communicate and collaborate with your team members. So instead of doing everything by email, because a lot of things get lost in people's email inboxes and a lot of people don't really check their email in a timely way, you can all have Slack downloaded on your phone or on your computer and you can get messages instantly. And a lot of people, especially in the nonprofit space, swear by Slack because it's just an easier, stress-free way to communicate with folks. And it kind of cuts through all the noise of everything else that may be going on in your email inbox. But Slack is pretty powerful. So it's more than just a messaging app. You can do a lot of things. You can call people through Slack. You can share documents through Slack. So people around the country, if they are working in the same industry, so like you're a nonprofit consultant, there are some nonprofit consulting groups that have Slack groups and everyone's added to Slack and everyone communicates that way and that's how they collaborate. So basically what it is, it's a tool to help you collaborate more effectively and it helps bring all the things you need to the table so you don't have to go outside of Slack to do everything. And the great thing about Slack is that you can add other apps to it. So if you use like Google Calendar or Google Drive, you can add them as apps in Slack. Or I've even used Slack before for volunteers or employees to sign in. It's used kind of like a time clock and they put in like different messages and Slack will keep a record of it so you know who signed in and who didn't. Like it's very, very flexible. So if you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. You also get discounts being a nonprofit with Slack. So you need to make sure you check that out. But there is a basic free service that anybody can use. So if you're looking for a better way to communicate, say like with your board or even with your volunteers, then you can use Slack as a way to do that. Just keep in mind though, you have to use it. Sometimes what happens with Slack is that if people aren't used to going in the app and they don't have notifications set up, it's another thing that they forget. So if you're going to use Slack, you just need to make sure you actually use it every day so people get in the practice of using it. Because I found that if you just use it occasionally, it kind of falls off. And I'm a big culprit for this. I am a part of some Slack groups where I just have like completely tuned out even if I go in Slack every day, because I use Slack to communicate with my vir virtual assistant, but I'll communicate with her, but forget other channels. So just keep in mind, like it does take work to like remind people and hold people accountable for using it. It's not a magic bullet, but it's a really, really effective tool when used the right way. So the second service is a service called Loom, L-O-O-M. 
M. And it's a service where you can basically do screen recordings and send them right away to people. So there are a couple ways you can do this. Say that you are training somebody on how to do something. You can quickly do a screen recording and send the video to somebody via email so they can see it quickly. So instead of you having to set up a meeting where you have to walk through it together or getting on the phone and making sure your, your calendar is aligned, you can quickly communicate what you want to communicate to that person through screen recording and then send it. What do I mean by screen recording? Because I recognize that some people may not know what that is. It's just when you're recording what's on your screen. So anybody sees what you're doing on your computer screen and you're taking a video of that and it captures that video and you can send it out. So as I said just now, you can use it as a training tool for people who you want to show how to do something. Here are some other examples of how you want to use it. One of my favorite ways people use Loom is when they're recording thank you videos that they send out to donors. So if a donor has given you money for your organization and you want to do a more personalized thank you that encourages people, first of all, to pay attention to your nonprofit, to notice you and feel special and feel acknowledged, you can record a special thank you, say that person's name, explain like how their gift helped make an impact in your organization and send it right away. And once people get that, they feel so special. They feel so included. Just imagine how you would feel if you got like a special video where someone actually said your name. <laughs> so you can look way more sophisticated um, than you really are when you, you're using a service like Loom. Another way you might want to use Loom is if you're running a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. And if you don't know what that is and you need tips on doing that, then I'm linking a video above where I talked about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And I also have a workbook that helps you implement your own peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. So I'll link that in the comment box below. But if you're running a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, meaning that you have other people who are fundraising on your organization's behalf and you have a toolkit, because that's one of the things you need like that is a cheat code when it comes to running a successful uh, campaign so you you send out a toolkit but you want to explain to people what's in the toolkit how to use it when to start fundraising you know all the steps they need to do to get started you can record a loan video really quickly so you don't have to necessarily set up different meetings with every person and just send those those videos out and that will save a lot of time. So that's just another example of how you can use Loom. There are so many different options for that, but just wanted to throw out that Loom is available and they have a free service. So they have a free level where you don't have to pay anything to start out. Number three is Linktree. And this is particularly for people who use things like Instagram. So Linktree is a service basically where you have one link but that one link will send people to what's called a tree or a list of different links where they can select where they want to go on your website or to donate or whatever and then go from there. Why is this needed? Why is this important? Because on Instagram in particular, you're not allowed and most people who don't have a lot of followers are very limited in the links that they can put in their posts, right? So you can't just go on a post and click and go direct to a website. There are some ways around that through stories and through reels, but who knows what will change in a year or so from now. But generally, you cannot just put a link on Instagram in your post and people can just click it right away. The only option for most people is that you have a link in your bio. You're only allowed one link. So what if you want people to do two different things? What if you have a volunteer sign up and then you have a donate link? And you want to show both of those you don't want to sacrifice you want to have both of those available and you don't want to keep switching out the link when you want people to come sign up or do something so the solution to that is link tree you set up one link tree that's one link and then that link will go to a page a very simple page that will show all the different links you want to direct people to so you can have both those volunteer links and the donate link once that person clicks the link tree and you can go from there. So it's called link tree because it creates that tree of links. Get it? So link tree is just one of many similar services like that. There are a lot of services just like that. You don't have to use link tree, but I'm using it as an example and it's one of the more popular ones. So do your research and figure out what works best for you. But again, they have a free level and you don't have to pay to use it starting out. So I just want to make sure I flag that one. 
And the last one is my absolute favorite. I've talked about it in other videos, but it is ClickUp. ClickUp is a project management system that helps you keep track of any processes or any systems that you have running in your nonprofit. And ClickUp is amazing because you have so many options to do things within the service. So at a basic level, you can use ClickUp to track any goals you have or anything that you're working toward and all the action steps that need to be done. And you can add deadlines, you can assign people, you can have people who have guest accounts who also can be assigned and no be notified when they're assigned to a task. It helps keep you on track. It helps make sure that everyone knows what they're supposed to be working on, everyone's clear on what the deadlines are, and everyone is being held accountable for all of that. But that's just a basic level. ClickUp can do so much more. It can automate tasks for you. It can send out notifications and reminder emails for you. You can do different views. So you can do a calendar view or you can do a board view. So if you like to look at like, say you do your to-do list and you like to look at it more so like post-its or you prefer list or you prefer looking at your calendar, whatever view makes sense for you, you have all the different options to do that. And I really can't explain how powerful and how amazing ClickUp is in this video. You just have to check it out for yourself. All I will say is, is that it's easy to use. It's fun to use. If you're a kind of person that likes to plan, if you're the kind of person that likes to draw out goals, and maybe I'm a weirdo because I like doing stuff like that, which is why I like it so much. But if you really need something to help organize your processes, or if you're trying to keep people on track and make sure that everyone is clear on what you're working on. For example, your board. If your board puts out a certain number of assignments that need to be done before the next meeting and you want this tracked somewhere, you can put it in ClickUp, you can assign people to their tasks and people can come in and write what their progress is. They can identify whether they're done, whether they're in process and you can customize all of that. So my biggest piece of advice for you with ClickUp is just try it. There are services that are similar to ClickUp, but in my opinion, in my humble opinion, they don't come close. But there are services like Asana or Trello. I've heard of Notion. People have said good things about Notion. And those are examples of what I'm talking about, like what ClickUp can do. But just sign up for the free service. You get a lot even for the free service. And even if you pay for more options, it's still pretty inexpensive per month. All right, y'all, so thank you so much for watching. If you need help getting organized, if you need help trying to figure out what you should be working on in your first year, don't forget to check out my nonprofit startup workbook. It can help you identify your goals. It can help you identify what your outcomes are and what you need to be measuring. And a lot of these tools that I mentioned can help facilitate the work you put in your one year strategic plan. So it can help you accomplish those things. So be sure to check out my workbook if you haven't seen that yet. And also, if you use any of these services or if you from this video decide to use one and you really like it, please come back and comment and let other people know so we can share the wealth. If you need help with your nonprofit, visit me at www.bossinabudget.com and I will see you in the next video.